I think it was like 10 minutes before five o'clock Friday afternoon, Silas from our device core development team wrote me, Casper, why don't you implement a presenter from Logitech? He wanted to use the buttons here to do things in a universe of broadcast devices. And I thought that was a great Friday evening project for a geek like me. So actually I did it. And what I want to show you now is how we can take a blue pill, just plug in this receiver. And now we will have this one raw panel enabled and we can combine it with commands today. I'll use my go to atom switcher as I used to, but it could be cameras. It could be video routers. It could be any device you have seen reactor control. All right. So here we are. This is reactors UI. This is um, basically a configuration that gives us a some graphics on on the um, blue pill here, which is our server. And that is now connected to this one. So actually, I want to show you straight away. We can add a panel. And it's now searching for panels on the network. And we already have it right there. You see, hits Logitech R500. That's the name of this one after I did the integration and I'll just pick it and it connects to it. You see, there's a sweet little icon. There's no point in trying to light up the LEDs on it because it doesn't have any. And all I need to do now is to create a new custom configuration. Okay. Fun and games. So let's do that. And we're basically in business now. So we'll go to the configuration tab real quick. We'll, yeah, by the way, look, we have the configuration fun and games down here. We have multiple pages we can create. I think maybe with two buttons, we should just stick to something really simple. But basically being on the background page, we just click this one. We have the ATEM switcher over here on the right side. We can expand that one. We can search for cut. So let's just do that. And we find it right there. We'll just click it. And now I just need to select my ME row and I should be good to go. Let's try it. Let's just bring up the ATEM software control and then let's try this button. Wow, it worked straight away. That's really, really cool. What about the other button, the back button? What can I do with that one? So we could scroll down the list here and we'll find uh, upstream key enable. So picking this one, we need to once again, select an ME row. We need to select which key it is. And we also need to select an approach. So in this case, we have in this set of things we can do uh, something called an approach, which might be like turn it toggle. Yeah, let's try toggle. All right. So we are good to go back now and then we'll try the other button. And we're basically toggling the key on and off. OK, I had another fun thing that I think we should try. And that is to make a cycling function for sources on an auxiliary. So instead of the uh, can be either of them, let's just pick this one. We'll just go back and take uh, pick another one click behavior. So by the way, did you notice how easy it really is to select functionality for this? It's just like open your device that we have attached to the system. And if we had more devices, we could add over here like a camera, whatever we find on the network. We can just add those things. You see, uh, actually, we have a camera here, CIN 700 from Canon. Let's just add that in. IP address and all that is set already. And we are connected to the camera shortly after. So going back to configuration, we could click this one. We could go into the list of actions we can choose or behaviors, as we call them. And now you have all the behaviors that this camera uh, has in it. It could be preset recall, for instance. So we could now do preset recall on a Canon camera on this one. So basically, I'll recall preset number one when I press the back key. I just don't know what will happen on the camera if I do. It recorded, recalled some sort of preset. OK, that's great. So it did work as I intended to. Now, OK, you, I have proven the point. I'm sure you are totally with me on this one. And what I want to show you now was that cycling of auxiliary sources because it shows some of the things you can do with reactor here, which is really cool. So on that one, I'll select aux cycle instead. And now I can pick my aux channel. I can also pick my inputs and notice I can pick multiple inputs. So that is pretty cool. I'll just do that. So I think so now we have input one, three, five and seven. Let's try to see what happens if we go over here and we observe what happens to the second. Was it the second or the first? Let me see. It was auxiliary. OK, let's pick auxiliary channel two. So this should be the ASIM switcher. Let's just try cut again. Yes, cut works. And now let's observe number two. And I'm pressing this. And nothing happens in this case. OK, so why is that? Now, <clears throat> in this case, 
we need to look into what is underneath. So because this one is a button and this function is designed to be a rotary encoder, I'm pretty sure the reason why this is a, the fact that this is a button is the reason why it won't rotate. So now I'm showing you something advanced, okay? And just close your eyes if this is way beyond you. I just want to show it so that you can see underneath we can do all kinds of cool things. And we have two so-called event handlers and those event handlers are, ah, they are actually binary type. You see it says down, it is, oh, now I know. You see there's a down and an up. And if I press, mm, okay, it requires a little bit of explanation. Many of our products, the Skahoy, um, proprietary controllers. We have four-way keys and this one is obviously coded to detect the left and the right edge press of a button. But in this case we have no edge because this is just a super super simple button. So actually we can just ignore one of these and then take the up and then we can change this one into no edge. And the moment we have done that I'm pretty sure this would work. Okay are you ready? No 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 wait we need to see this one. Click click Ah, okay. So it sort of stops at source number seven. Why? Again, let's go back and you can see the awesomeness of event handlers inside of Reactor here. I know it's advanced, but still just imagine how clever this system is built. We can change cycle up to one called cycle up and roll over. And it means that as we reach the top, it will roll over and start from the bottom again. So all we need to do now is to go back here and check for auxiliary two. Are you ready? One, Three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. And that's what I wanted to show you today. Just real quick and sweet how we can integrate a remote control like this one. Just quickly so you know how it was made into a panel on the network. I need to show you that inside of packages of my blue pill, the thing that responds to adding this one on USB is the one called X panel hits. That's an application that you will search up in our internal device um, shop in a sense. And as you do so, you can see scrolling to the um, scrolling to the lock here that if I pull it out and if I plug it in again, it's going to tell me that, oh, I found the Logitech R500, it's activated. It is now being a raw panel available on a given port. That's interesting. Notice that port actually. I think I wanna just bless you here at the end of this video by showing you that if I make a connection, TCP connection to my blue pill on that port, I was just told about, you see, it is now actually connected to my remote here. So regardless of the fact that any press here will actually do stuff on the ATEM switcher, you'll also notice, I press now, that I see triggers in the raw panel interface. So it's a little bit under the hood here, clearly showing you how we turn this device into a TCP enabled raw panel that is on the network and can be connected to by Rector, which I just did and showed you how easy it was to configure. But actually under the hood, this is what's happening. And it is the X panel hits that will pick up the USB receiver that I just plugged into it so that it becomes a network enabled device that will help you to do stuff with broadcast equipment.